Hey there, everybody. I'm Chris Woolley, and I'm your host for Let's Develop. Welcome! So today we've got a really fun episode. We've got Unleashing Your Creativity with Passion Projects with Justin Tedford. And he is just going to be sharing some information with us today about how you can spark your creativity and get some extra oomph going on through uh, Passion Projects. So this, if this is your first time joining us with Let's Develop... Welcome. This is a uh, bi-weekly webinar series brought to you by American Color Imaging. So we've got a new episode every two weeks. We bring in photographers from all over by your request, and uh, we learn some cool stuff. They share some information. We learn and grow as a community together. So I think that's pretty rad. Um, so a big shout out to American Color Imaging for uh, help making this happen. Now, if you happen to miss the last episode that we did on landscape photography with Jeff Johnson, that replay is live on ACI's website. Um, so go check that one out because it's definitely worth uh, looking at. Uh, and Jeff even had a checklist uh, for us on what to bring when you're doing landscape photography. Um, so I bet you uh, if you email him, he can still send that one to you. So make sure that uh, we are checking that out. So we are in a webinar format with this. So if you do have questions, put them into chat and uh, we'll ask them live because uh, Justin's willing to answer them. So we'll pick his brain and take <laughs> full advantage of that. Um, and if you stay to the end, we do have some prizes, giveaways, and a really, really good special from ACI that you're not going to want to miss. So uh, let's get into the uh, the meat of it. And we are looking at whew, Justin here. And uh, he's a all photographer, right. husband, photo educator. He lives in Iowa. And it's all about those rural landscapes, back roads, and just kind of getting the agriculture and communities that are there and just helping preserve them. Uh, super, super talented photographer, crazy nice guy, and he's here to share some information with us. So uh, welcome. Thank you, Justin. Well, yes, thanks for having me. So, You excited for today? I am, I am. I'm always excited, especially for speaking about rural landscapes in Iowa and things like that. So Yeah, things that kind of hit you at home, right? <laughs> it sure does. I can leave and go to Glacier National Park, which was awesome, but nothing like coming back home and hitting the gravel road and getting the truck all dusty. So, <laughs> well, you've got some great information for us today. So uh, let's get started. Yeah, perfect. So I want to, I'm always with a good background story. I'm full of stories as Connie and a few people know, um, but I want to start out kind of like back in late summer of 2005. It's funny how as an artist or a creative, how we, we put, we're always influenced by something. So Way back then, that's when I graduated. I was 2005. I just left basic training that summer with the Army. I come back and I got this glorious, what do I want to say, trip to an opportunity to hang out in Alaska for two months. So while I was up there, I was thinking, you know, I was still new to photography, very new, uh, maybe a year or two into it. And it was supposed to be an easy A. And I was like, oh, I'm in high school. I'm going to take an easy class. It's a senior class. I need some points. Let's get out of here. And I took it and I fell in love. And it was that dark room, you know, making your first print. And then I, I had the bug, as they say. And what's funny is, is you go back and start reliving things and pulling things from the past and how we're influenced. I had this notebook. And in this notebook, there's a page that I wrote next photo project and it says portraits, farmer portraits, everyday people. Those were two things that I wrote down. And I will tell you, I closed this notebook. It has traveled from three apartments, college. I never thought those two words again. And for some reason I've been drawn back to those two things. And I'll go over those projects here in a little bit. So we'll get started too is well, as they say, show of hands, but or not in real person format, like I'm usually teaching, um, is we're more than photographers, right? So especially if you're doing this as a business and this is your livelihood, or as I say, my side hustle, is we're an accountant, we're a content creator, we're a social media manager, we're a business owner and an artist and that salesperson, the complaint department when somebody's not happy, <laughs> we're also the visual storyteller you know we got to tell our client's story or even if you're not doing this professionally you're still creating images to tell a story on a trip 
or wherever, whatever you're doing or why, whatever you're using the camera for. And we're also marketing and we're the web developer and so much more. But what happens with this over time is when you do all those things, whether, you know, for me, it's a 40 hour a week job. I then come home. I have a family. I take care of my wife and daughter. And then I go out and do a shoot or I go out and I have to create images for some projects that I'm always doing for other clients. It's ongoing. And I've been there. I've burned. You'll burn yourself out and you start to lose that passion. I don't care how much in the world you love what you do. You eventually will burn yourself out. And we lose that passion. We also lose our creativity and the work that we love to do suffers. And it's happened to me. Like Chris and I were talking before we hopped on here. I don't love weddings. And if I roll out of bed, I'm like, oh, I got to do a wedding today. That is going to show in all of my photos. Now, yes, you're going to get great photos. You're going to love them, but you're not going to see the passion and the love in the work I create. But it doesn't show to us. It's going to show to the client. Now, most of the time, I will say, oh, I have horrible photos. And as photographers, we all do that. Oh, I don't love, I don't love my photo. It wasn't the best wedding in the world. It wasn't the best photo shoot in the world. I didn't get what I wanted. But our clients are like, wow, these are beautiful. I love them. You know, and we're always holding ourselves to that higher standard, which is awesome. But over time, we are going to burn ourselves out. And how do we fix this? I get that question a lot. People say, I don't love or I haven't picked up. The biggest thing I get in my mentoring when I'm doing mentoring is, Justin, I haven't picked up the camera in six months. And I ask them why. I'm just so busy. I'm so busy for this. And I'm into it right now. I have I do a calendar every year that I sell. I have produced hardly no images for this calendar this year. And it's been a long road <laughs> for me this year. But it happens to everybody. You get that life and it pulls you away and what do we do to fix it? Well, passion projects, you know, start unleashing that creativity and passion projects for me. It's funny how, like I said, things creep up on you. And in that notebook, I wrote farmers and everyday people. So I like to define like with any good goal or anything you're doing, we got to define what, what it is. And this is totally a passion project. This is how I see it. I mean, you can... You can go out and Google YouTube passion projects or projects in photography, and there's 20 or 30 different people on YouTube that's going to say, this is what a project is, but this is what it is to me. So first, I think we need to know and define what passion is. And passion's one great force that unleashes creativity, because if you're passionate about something, then you're more willing to take risks. I love that quote. Um, and it is true. Like, if it's something for me, like, I'm not that that portrait photographer normally. Um, one of my projects is portrait based. I'm usually out traveling, photographing small towns, um, things that don't talk back. That's a good way to put it. Gravel roads, things like that. So for me, if it's something I don't love, I don't take the risks. I play it safe at a wedding. I don't get creative. I'll have this super creative picture in my head. I'm like, oh, taking a risk don't do it. You know, it's kind of the just keep going, keep going. But when I am out photographing, I don't know, a barn or whatever it may be in the Midwest, I'm super passionate about it. Yeah, I'm going to take risks. But again, for me, if it doesn't turn out, oh, well, it just gets deleted or thrown off. But I think this is a very good quote on passion. So this is to me truly what, what passion is to me. And it's the reason we roll out of bed each and every day. I feel like if you don't have something to look forward to, you get in this kind of depression hanging out like, oh, whoa, me. There's nothing to look forward to. So then it's like, what do you do? I always have something. I'm a big picture guy. I like to see the big picture, but I got to see the fine details. And when you have that big picture to look at, and you're like, I'm going to do this. Even sometimes it's even, I don't even know when I'm going to do it, but it's knowing that I'm going to do it is what gets me to roll out of bed every day. And it's what lights your fire, I think, because I love it when I'm teaching somebody something and they come in and they just got the blank look. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And either it's one or multiple mentoring sessions or something they find like they're super passionate about, they get excited and they're just 
to the ceiling, super excited, like, oh my God, I did this. Or I love it when people email me and say, oh my God, you should have saw what I found here. And then they share a photograph with me and say, oh, it's just crazy because I think whatever lights your fire is what is going to make you obviously get out of bed each day and every day and just kind of keep jumping along down the path. And it's what gets you through difficult times. Um, Photography has always kind of pulled me out of a a weird state. If I get depressed or not feeling eh, kind of icky, I know I can pick up even on the days where like, let's say COVID, that's a very good example. I was holed up in the house the entire time, the first like three months, everything was closed. And my wife just said one day, Justin, leave the house. I'm like, we can't, there's COVID and there's all this stuff going on. And it was just very stressful. Obviously we all lived through it and still are, but she's like, go take photographs. I'm like, what? That I can still do. It was, it was just that weird little thing. And I did, I just created images and that's all I did. And it can get you through whether it's difficult family times or, or whatever. And it's also your story. You know, as you go back, whether you're the, the professional photographer, the amateur, or somewhere in between, is it's a part of you? Because that's how I'm known. Um, people will say, Justin, you know, I, will, I used to be, let's say, put it this way. I was the local camera store manager forever. And we would go to hy V. And literally, the local grocery store and people be like whipping out their camera with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens on it. Be like, I'm having problems because they knew that's me. Like, I recently was asked a question like, you know, who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm a photographer. Even though I work 40 hours a week, that's me. If you took that away from me, I will tell you today, I don't know what I would do with myself tomorrow if I forgot how to do photography. And it's also your hopes and dreams. That's, that's what gets you out. Sometimes it's just that little hope. I still have the hope and dream that someday I'm 35, that maybe I'll be able to quit my full-time job and do this full-time. But then there's other days I'm like, I'm okay with the side gig. So it's just one of those things is all these things are going to lead into passion and projects. And it's also your personal brand. Um, you know, I think whether you're Nike or just intended for photography or whatever, everybody's got to have a brand. Even if you're not a business, people, your brand is kind of like who you are. You know, I'm known as a photographer, the guy who used to work at the camera store and the guy that's super willing to answer questions for you at 2 a.m. if you Facebook me and I happen to be up. So it's just putting that brand out there. So you, and here's another, Barbara Corcoran. It said, you can't fake passion. And you can't because you can tell when somebody's faking something. You know, I can... Some days I'm afraid like, oh, I'm not loving this gig I'm doing. It's like, is it showing? It probably is. And I don't want people to say, oh, well, you know, you're not here. You're not excited to create images for us. And that happens. But you can't fake it, I don't think, because people are going to figure it out eventually. So passion projects. So why do we do these? Or I think why you should do these is they did get out of that rut that I was talking about. You get into that kind of proverbial pit of life and if it's your business and you're tired of being the marketing person and the accountant guess what you can go find something else to focus on the other thing that i like about passion projects is when it's digging you out of the rut it's giving you that passion which brings back the creativity but at the same time there it's like you have total control it, and it's creative control there's not you know the last wedding I did, great couple, but they had like 18,000 sheets of paper. And they're like, we want this photo and this photo. We want one with very descriptive, like bride looking over right shoulder with the sun over the, I'm like, whoa, you were like really detailed here. And to me, that sometimes like sucks the life out of me um, because it's like, you're telling me how to do it. Let me envision what I'm seeing here. And that's why you hired me for anything, for like a food shoot, you know, I'll do a, a sandwich on a plate and they'll bring it out on a plate and I'm like, well, that does not go with anything. And I'll still photograph it. And then I do my thing. But when I have total con- creative control in my project, I can switch it up and say, I want to do this, or I want to do that. Or I'm going to put you in front of this barn door. And I don't like that. You know, I can't tell a customer or a, I hate the word customer, sorry, client <laughs> at a wedding that 
oh, I know that door and you have some sentimental value to this door and you have to be photographed under it. If I'm not digging it, I still have to like get deep down inside and find some creativity. But with the projects, when all that stuff comes in and closes in on you, you can bust out and say, hey, I'm going to do my own project. And it creates a challenge. Um, for me, I do what I call the farmer project, which is where I photograph Iowa farmers and tell their story. And that was, I thought, oh, it's going to be easy. I call up somebody, hey, you're a farmer. You want to take a picture? Yeah. You know, it's been a challenge from day one. Like it's hard to get in and I'll go into that a little bit more later. And then things kind of cross through and then, then COVID hit. And then I thought, I gave up. I was like, no one is going to want me to come out to their house, a guy they don't know to photograph. And then I remember Iowa farmers literally will, you could cut off their thumb and they're like, we got to get a harvest done. It's fine. I'm still alive. Let's finish this up first. And then we'll go to the hospital. So, you know, and it's also one of those things too, is when you, when you're creating this challenge for yourself, and I hate to tell people, I hate the thing where people say, think outside the box. I tell people to think like there is no box because I feel like the boxes, you know, oh, we got to, these are parameters. And with parameters come loss of control and creativity, I think. And it's not a challenge because we have to fit everything into this box and it's pretty A, B, C, and D. Um, but the other awesome thing about projects is you answer to no one but you. You can decide to do this at two o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the afternoon, you can go like, let's say you plan out something like a photo shoot with a friend or a client. And there's all these things that hit, we're doing this and this and this, I can get in the truck and say, okay, I'm going to go do, you know, I'm going to go out and photograph, I don't know, flowers today. That's how I feel. And then all of a sudden I run across this cool little small town and I got a project for that too. And then I can just switch gears. I'm not, no one's holding me. I can switch gears 15 times during the day and come home with something. So I know some people will go out and, and I do this. I get in this line, this linear line of, I have to do this, 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 and this. And I got to do it all, or it's not a successful day. No, I'm starting to learn like, I need to kind of get out of here um, and just roll, roll with it and go with the flow. Um, the other thing too, is it teaches you to build a consistent and strong body of work. I think that's a big one because some people say, I don't know what kind of photographer I am. I'm a portrait photographer. I'm a landscape photographer. Maybe you're both. Um, but one thing is I've never considered myself to have a style per se, but people will scroll through Facebook and say, Oh, I knew that was your photo. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy. They didn't have to look at my business name or my name and they just know who's, whose it is. And that's just consistency and consistency where it's editing or a certain style. Like I see by the rule of thirds, I just how I, I see. Um, and people say, Oh, I know it was yours and your image. And I didn't have to go and look and click and follow a link. I just know it's yours. And I think it, and all that is helped by just getting out and photographing random things. Like if you're trying to build, like, let's go back a little bit to the challenge part is it also makes you a better photographer because it puts you outside of that realm. And I think you learn the most when you're out of your comfort zone. And you, it has the ability to change you as a person, I think, um, because you start to open up your, your eyes more uh, to the world. Like I always knew farmers in Iowa had a slight challenge every day and family farms. That's what I should say, family farms. And I sit down and interview these farmers and I hear of, well, last year we barely made a profit or we made no profit, or you get to know these farm families like crazy and they've almost become family for me with my project. And it's changed me because now when people are like, well, farmers get all this money and all this extra stuff, I, it's like, I have knowledge is power, man. And I'll say, you know, do you know? And then I'll just like go through and just start have these quotes in my head that I've heard from some of my farm families. And most people just say, okay, yeah, that's, that's them. But there are people like, I didn't know that. I did not know that they struggle that much. And I was like, okay. And it also slows us down. Um, when you have a project, 
there's lots of things you got to think about and do. And we'll go through those here in a little bit as well, but it slows us down. And I think when you slow down, you start seeing better, you start creating better work. Now there are pitfalls to everything. There's pros and cons. Um, I'm not going to say that all my projects are like super smooth and everything goes well, um, but they take a lot of time, a lot of time. And if you don't already have time, you got to make time. I mean, my farmer project is, was literally supposed to be a portrait of a farmer and that was it. Well, then it led into a friend says, Hey, can I help you with this project? Sure. She's another photographer. And she's like, how about we interview farmers? And then we'll do this. And then it led to where well, we're going to do a show. And then we we're going to do these photos. Now it's turning into like, how many photos do we do and all this stuff. And then it was literally, I think the first summer we did it every, it was like three times a week. I was going either five miles from my house up to a hundred miles, three times a week. I had no time to do anything else other than photograph farmers. And for me, it was like, I didn't hate any of it. You know, even though I had all this time away from family and life, I was excited. I had something to look forward to. And sometimes it's resources. Um, the farmer project is supposed to be simple. It's now turned into a very complicated passion project where now we're looking at, I'm going to do a book. Um, and then you start going down that realm of money. And you're like, oh, book, it can't be that expensive. And I've talked to a few publishers and they're like, oh yeah, it's this much. And I'm like, oh my God, $5,000. And, you know, and I have to order all these books and, you know, and it, all my projects are self-funded. Uh, well, let me take a step back. The farmer project, I have raised a little bit of money, but I blew through that money really quick. Um, just with everything that was going on with the project, but it wasn't thousands of dollars. And I always said, I tell all my farm families, I'm not here to make money off you. So I've always told them, if somebody called me up and said, we're going to pay you $10,000, $10,000 to publish this and do all this work. I'm not going to keep a penny of that um, because then it doesn't become a passion anymore for me. So I just said, if we made $20,000 off this project for some weird reason, I would take that $20,000 and I would break it amongst up all my farm families and let them have it because it's not for me. It's for them. It's telling their story and they, they don't get paid. You know, I don't roll up and say, Hey, here's $50 to do it. You know, I give them images. I'm going to print them very nice images off my Canon pro 100 over here when I'm done, but you know, that's what we're going to do. And the other thing is access. I thought this was going to be easy. Some projects, if it's dealing with people, you have to get access. And that's probably the toughest thing. Because especially if they don't know you, farmers are very standoffish people, not, and I don't want to take that in a, like a very negative way, but they're just very, they keep their cards close to their vest. Um, and we have to deal with, I've been like, you're not PETA, are you? And you're not, this, no, 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 I'm not, you know, and they're, they're still not hundred percent sure. So access comes from, you know, family. It's usually a family comes up to me and say, hey, my dad might do this. The farmer never calls me. So access can be hard if it's maybe a location you need to get to that you want to photograph, but they're only open, I don't know, eight to eight, but you want to do a shot in the Milky Way per se there at night. Again, you got to have access and you're afraid of failure. That is my biggest pitfall in life is I don't want to fail at anything. I want everything to be a success right out of the gate. And I will tell you, you will fail and failure only makes you better because I will tell you, if you had the world's coolest photo or the opportunity and you blow it, I guarantee you, you will never make that mistake again because you will live through that mistake over and over and it's not going to make you better. So it's okay to fail. And the other thing is you want to share instant success with followers, family, and friends. I am horrible at that. I will come back from a shoot and I have these beautiful farmer images and they're on my hard drive waiting to see the light of day someday because I feel if I show them now, when it comes time to actually put all the photos together into a group, whether it's a book, a, a show, or whatever it's going to be, everybody's going to see them. They've all, oh, I've already seen that. What, what is there to see? Nothing. So that's the hardest thing for me. So I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff, post photos, you know, hey, we're here, we're doing this. And that's what, you know, people love. I think more than the photos, you know, I do use some to kind of, I do show those photos to other farm families, say, this is what we do. 
that helps me gain access and build trust. And when I build trust and gain that access, if it came to the point where you're not allowed to step on the farm to, I'm literally, they're telling me like stories that one, one daughter said, really dad? And the girl's like, yeah. She's like, I've never heard the story before. You told a complete stranger the story that I've never even heard in my family. So when you gain access and building trust it makes things a whole lot easier. That is also a challenge. So let's talk a little bit on how to be successful as well. And I think with any project is you got to commit by writing down your project's goals, the why, and post them where you're going to see them on a regular basis. Um, I've got next to my desk, sticky notes. Um, I have a board over here I can stick stuff up on. You know, they're on my laptop. But I have to remind, I forget, I will forget tomorrow what I write down. So if I can see them all the time, even like for me, I have notebooks filled with information that's useless because I'm always afraid I'm going to forget it, but I write it all down. And guess what? I wrote those two down every day. I with people in this notebook and farmers and like 17 years later, I saw it and I thought, you know what? I need to do one of those. So um, you might find something and might not, and it's there. So write it down so you can kind of see it on that regular basis, kind of that refresher. And that also helps you when you lose a passion, when you lose passion for a passion project, which happens, that kind of gets you back at it and going. And then find somebody to keep you accountable. I do that because I'm a procrastinator. I always say tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, my friend Brenda says, hey, you said yesterday by noon, you'd send me the spreadsheet. Okay. Somebody's holding me accountable, especially other farm families like when I put something down and I'm going to show up at your place at 6 p.m., we're going to do a photo shoot. I'm all in. I don't care unless there's some tragedy, I'm still showing up. And again, they're holding me accountable. And put your time commitments on a calendar. That's a big thing. Like block out time. Like if you're so busy, I will say, okay, I go into my iPhone, put in the calendar, go to take photos. I put that there because to me, when I put something in my calendar, it's set. That is another pitfall of me. I will not stray from it, even if I have to. Uh, it stresses me out. So, But when it's down, then I know to do it. And I set reminders one day before, three days before. And I'll say, hey, in three days, you're going to go take pictures. Two days, you're going to go take pictures. It's just that commitment on the calendar. And the other thing, pick a less consuming and complicated first project. If you've never done a project, don't like, I've got some friends who are like, I've never done one of those 365 projects. And they like, I'm going to make it easy. I'm just going to use my cell phone. Awesome. And I'm like, how's your 365 project? Oh, I quit in the first week of the year. It was too much. You know, it's things like that. And I, I didn't expect my first project to be super, super complicated. And it was, and that's okay. Um, but things will evolve as time goes. But again, choose something you're passionate about. Like if I love farm. I love rural life. I grew up on my grandparents' farm every waking moment of my life. And I still go out there on occasion when I go back home. I always make a visit, though they both don't live there anymore. But they still own the property. For me, it's kind of like reminiscing on my childhood. But I'm passionate about it. So I go back. So if you're going to say like, I hate flowers. Well, don't go photograph flowers because you're not passionate about it. Or if you don't like farmers, don't photograph farmers. It's, again, you're going to lose passion and your passion is lack thereof is going to show. So I'm going to show you a couple of quick things with my projects. So project number one, um, the reason I did the farmer project is I was, or sorry, let me step back. Not the farmer project, um, my abstract landscape project. I was sick and tired of chasing perfect. If you're a photographer and you're hanging out on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you are in the world, everybody will say, you have to do it this way. It has to be sharp. It has to be in focus. It has to be this. It has. I was tired of hearing that. I did that for 40 hours a week trying to teach everybody how to be perfect. It's okay not to be perfect. And I was ready to put a, a new twist on something I'd been doing for an eternity. It was landscapes. And my job did it. I love my job at the camera store, but it was a lot. It was more than 40 hours a week. It drained it. It was like sucking, it's literally sucked the passion out of me on something I loved. These people said, how can you work 40 plus hours a week doing photography and then go home and do it? 
And then you go back and you never take a break. Well, must be super passionate about it because I never really got tired of it. And I wanted to feel free. And it kind of became a start to a new life, to be honest, because I've been going through ups and downs several years. And I'm very open if you're friends with me on Facebook and my personal challenges with mental health and being a veteran. And I was so tired of being perfect or stuck inside that box that this made me feel free. There was no worries, a care in the world. I could do what I want. And I needed to find something that broke the rules again. Put your camera on a tripod. You're a landscape photographer. People just, their minds are blown. I will go somewhere and photograph and they're like, you don't use a tripod. Yeah, not very often. It was things like that. So I am going to hopefully this little quick video will work. Can you move your mouse? Oh, yeah. So those are a lot of my, I call it abstract. I don't have a name for this project. Um, some of them are just out of focus or completely just taking the camera 70 to 200. I set it to F8, F11, get it down to about a quarter of a second. And I just whip the camera around. And what I love about it is it's freeing. There's no have to do this. And it's got to be perfect here. Now the thing that stinks is you can't replicate the same image twice. So it's a lot of experimenting and I will come back with the 900,000 pictures of just blurry mess. Um, and sometimes they work. So this, there's another quote here from Chris uh, Hemsworth is as kids, our experience or shape our opinions of ourselves and the world around us. And that's who we become as adults. And that notebook that I talked about in the beginning, that kind of shaped me. As a photographer, two people say, well, why do you photograph? Why are your projects all like landscape and people of the Midwest? One, that's all I know. I mean, honestly, I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Iowa. What I love about Iowa is I can literally, from Cedar Rapids, go to any part of the state in like four hours. You can be in the middle of the state in two, three hours. It's not like where I have to drive across somewhere 12 hours. So everything you do is you might look and say, I don't even know what to work on a project or what I want to do find out, you know, what you're doing. I come to conclude that lots of things from my childhood, you know, spending time on a farm that shaped me to be the photographer I am for rural landscapes, you know, or um, photographing farmers. I mean, could I photograph, you know, I don't know, dogs and stuff. I could, but that's not my thing. And these are the people that kind of shaped things that I did. So the picture on the guy with the watermelon, that's my grandfather. He's no longer uh, with us, but he bought me my first camera when everybody else told me, no, everybody said, no, you're just going to quit. Like you quit soccer and you quit painting and you quit. I was a quitter as a child. I was a grass picker in soccer, things like that. But he's like, no, you know what? I think you'll do it. And that's my grandmother on the right. I took that photo of her with the camera um, when I was in college um, after my grandpa passed away, she still lived on the farm and that's his hat and his shirt. And she still wears it to this day. She's almost 90 now and still does chores on the farm twice a day. And that's all the stuff that those people then kind of led me to photograph this wonderful gal in the middle. I stumbled across some of the coolest little places that I would have photographed. And I just walked in and I said, Hey, she owns this grocery store. It's a crazy little place in Delta, Iowa. And she was like, sure, you can take a photo of me. I don't ask random strangers, you know, but she just reminded me of these are the, these are the people of Iowa. And I'll talk about another project here in a little bit. And then the places, you know, that little town in that upper left-hand corner, that's where my dad grew up 
little town of like less than 500 people. Bottom right hand corner is where I grew up. These, and then the top right there is one of the places I frequent every time I go home. It's like my peaceful place, you know, but all those little things have led up to finding photographs like they're in the bottom left hand corner because I don't travel the interstates. I travel the highways. I find the most ill opportune routes and all this stuff, how it's, you know, as a child shapes you and everything shapes you, these are things you can pull projects from and do, which then kind of leads to, you know, my time in the military. That was a self portrait, you know, those three kids there on the left of my screen. I photographed them every day. That almost became a project. They came over, asked for food, did their things. Um, I had a little pocket camera. This is not with a DSLR. It was with the Canon little G10 at the time. And I took the photo over there on the right. You know, one of the guys staying on home plate. Everybody reads into that photograph like, oh, it's like yearning for home. No, I just photographed something. So, you know, I got a lot of photos like that, but all this stuff shapes you. And that's what all these things have shaped me to be project number two. And it's a project where I wanted to explore what people think it means to be an Iowan. I want to show the everyday person that lives in Iowa. We're not all farmers. We're not all, some people think we're just like crazy rednecks that hang out and drive trucks and shoot guns. No, I mean, there's so many, I was such a, a diverse place. So um, I want to introduce Iowans to Iowans through photographs and just answer one question. What does it mean to be Iowan? And I haven't done a lot of photos yet with this, um, but it's going to be the everyday Iowan. And these are kind of two test images. Um, my wonderful wife and daughter, they hate their photo being taken, but you know, they did it for me. So this is kind of, this is a project I'm barely getting off the ground yet. So this is going to evolve. I can't wait to see where it might be in six months, 12 months, a year. So when you finally go back to your old home, you find it wasn't the old home you missed, but your childhood. So I think that's what I do all the time is I'm, I'm chasing my, my childhood and all these projects and a lot of, you know, the farming and the, the people, like I've met so many cool people in Iowa over the years. Again, all that stemmed from a project or stemmed to a project. And then my third project that I work, I do all these at the same time. So you see how busy I get. But with this thing is I've had a chance to travel the world. I've been to Iraq, I've been to Germany, all through the military, but I never got a chance to travel my home state. Never. It was always home and back, never stop. You know, but I also want to show what we've lost and are losing. And small rural towns are the backbone of America. You hear that a million times, but it's true. And I start another project called Pop 500, Discovering Iowa's Forgotten Communities. So let's talk about kind of quickly planning our projects. As I like to look at things, there's like three frameworks uh, to, you know, a project. And one is taking photographs specifically for a project, has a very specific theme like farmers or small town Iowa or people. They usually have deeper contexts. They're usually geographical, you know, like Iowans. I'm not photographing just people I meet from all over. And it's kind of more of a narrowed approach. I'm, it's kind of laser beamed in there to where it's very planned out. I think that's how I see most projects. That's what I call framework number one. Framework number two is you've just been taking photographs forever. And then you all of a sudden you're going through your collection 
or your portfolio and you start to know, oh, I'm seeing this theme, you know, and then you start compiling things and pulling them in together. It's kind of like a subconscious project. It's got that more wider theme, um, may have a wider geographical area because maybe you just realized you photograph pink flowers in all 50 states. I don't know. You know, it usually comes from multiple images that have the same theme to create that body of work. It's kind of very framework number two is very unplanned. And this is harder than it looks because you're trying to create a project around photographs that are already taken, but then they also need to have that consistent theme or look. And that's hard to do when you're not planning that. And it has to be consistent or I think it just looks like a you know, splatter of images on the wall. And then framework number three is kind of taking to the two previous frameworks. It's like a hybrid. You combine them together. It might have that more wider theme. Geographical area, again, I think could be wider. And you'll still have that consistent theme and subject matter. Um, project started out as framework number two and morphs into framework number one. Um, this is, I think, where a lot of people could start as well. I like framework number one best, but I go into these three a lot more, but we don't have a lot of time, but if you have questions, let me know. And then planning a project. I look at planning a project like the farmer project in five steps is this is going to evolve, but the first one is pre-visualization. Um, ask questions to ourselves. Like, is this going to be short-term or long-term? What's my main goal? That's like your story. Um, what's my end result? Is it a book? Is it just throwing out on social media? Is it only a project that I'm going to see and hang on my walls in my office that no one will ever see but me? You know, I think this is the most important part because if we don't have a starting point, we don't know what we're doing. We're just guessing. We're out just like machine gunning images, like uh, click, 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 and then that's it. But no, this has evolved. Don't put yourself in the box and say, this is what it's going to be. Let it evolve and flourish. You know, Find that idea, write them down on sticky notes. I do that all the time or notebooks. I always have a notebook at work because when I'm working, I'm working on my business too. I'm like, oh my, I thought this idea. And if I don't write it down, I'm afraid I'm going to forget. And then finding that idea and inspiration. I mean, they can come from anywhere. It can come from music or news articles or, or life experiences. And if you don't love what you do, you won't do it with much conviction or passion. Um, I have a list of like, lyrics in my phone i don't know why that i type out because i think it will make a cool photograph if i ever need a name for a photograph i don't know what the photograph is going to be but you might find it in music or a news article or something like the lady from delta iowa and she reminded me of small town iowa that's why i photographed her and then research get an understanding of your subject and study your topic know it in and out you know when i show up to a farmer's house i don't know everything but i know enough to be dangerous that i know a little bit about farming so when they say certain things i know i'm not like uh yeah uh-huh uh -huh. and you're kind of that deer in the headlight look and then like this guy is a complete joke like you're not taking it seriously and then also research like what images do i need to tell the story do they need to be all wide shots or tight shots or whatever you just got to have kind of like a shot list of photographs you need to do to tell the complete story and then research will always be ongoing. I'm always reading a news article about farming. Farming has changed a lot in the last three years, and I guarantee it's going to change a lot in the next three years. Three years ago, I never heard of John Deere wanting to test all electric tractors. Just read an article about it last week. You know, it's different. Things change. And the most important, and it is the most important part of the pre-visualization process, I think. So research, Google whatever, pick up books, magazines, I don't know, go to Barnes and Nobles if you're going to photograph, I don't know, farmers and pick up every farm magazine you can find. Just get to know your subject in and out. You know, when I research, this is my Iowa, I compiled this, that is a list from online of all the towns in Iowa that have a population of 500 or less. I then went and created that map. Each one of those numbers is, a, is the county in Iowa and that number states how many cities or towns, I should say towns, um, that have population 500 or less. So if I don't know what I'm going to do, I go and I pick one of those counties and I put it into Google Maps and I have it take me to all eight towns and I do it all in one day. It's just part of the research. If not, 
if you don't research and know anything, you're going to be lost. This is the research of the farmer project. These are all my leads that came in. Green means we're going to do it. Yellow means it's a good lead, but I'm not hooked yet. And red is a no-go. Either got hung up on, they're not interested, whatever. Um, they just don't call them back ever again and don't show up on their doorstep. So it's all these things and organization. Then the shot list, you know, start getting specific photos to tell the story. Research may help dictate this. You're going to find out that maybe a big thing right now with farmers is, I don't know, X, Y, Z. Put that into your photos. Tell part of that story at that time and think about the gear you're going to need. I take every piece of gear I have for farmers because I don't know what I'm going to run into. I have studio lights. I have reflectors. I have all that gear. When I go and do the um, Pop 500 project, it's just my cameras. I don't have any fancy lights. I'm not lighting anything up. It's just straightforward raw photography. So crafting your story, you're going to have to have the time to do it. But you're also going to need the access. Those are your two biggest things is you got to have the access, but you got to have time. Sometimes farmers tell me you've got 45 minutes to an hour. I showed up at one house. He was cutting hay. His wife called him and said, you need to come in here. They're going to take your photo. And I said, no, hay is more important to the farm than me. I sat there for an hour and a half till he was done. It's all in its mutual respect. And then I get it back. And then create a mood board, whatever you do. Like I was looking for the book project. All those there are just book covers that I liked or you know, the everyday I one, there's a self-publishing. I'm going to self-publish a book on that. So I'm researching things that I come across. And that whole left side there is my phone. Those are all my, that's my brain. That's a very scary place. And there's all the things like things I want to do, blending exposures, commercial photography, Iowa State Parks, things like that. It's just all, it's like a mental brain dump. It just gets it out and less stressful that way. So do it, whether it's digitally or you stick stickers on the wall, just help organize things and crafting that story. And then call your images over and over and over and over and over. And if it's slightly blurry or it's slightly technically not good, don't fret over it and say, okay, I have to have it and make it. Don't convince yourself that that slightly out of, photo, fo slightly out of focus photograph is worth it because it's not. Um, keep that consistent style, build a consistent body of work because that's all going to tie in together. If you're going to edit things high contrast, edit it all high contrast. Don't edit some low contrast, some high. And then crafting that final product. Is it a physical, like a book, a show, prints, whatever? I think most things should end up being physical because we don't do enough. We already do enough of this digital sharing on social media, videos, website, all that. That's where it can go to help get the story out there. But in the end, plan something physical or it can be a hybrid. You know, it can be prints plus a website and video and social media, all that. So just come up with that in the end, some final product. Then, then you have that goal to work towards. So they come from where? This is kind of another quick story. Um, you're going to ask me, well, why do green beans have anything to do with the project? Well, that's how the farmer project started out was because people have a disconnect with food. I was listening to two high school kids argue about where green beans come from at Taco Bell on my lunch hour. One kid says they come from a can. The other kid says, no, you grow them, they cut them, and they put them in cans. And they're like, no, oh, they just come from cans. It boggled my mind. So that got my brain thinking, like, people don't understand where their food comes from. Well, there's farmers. I'll quickly show you some a video here.
Wow, that was so awesome. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, we do have a, a couple of uh, uh, questions here too, and we've got yeah. some prizes and stuff to give away. Uh, Carolyn wants awesome. to know if you're going to be uh, making a book of your Pop 500 images. Uh, that is, yes. That is on my thing eventually, yes. I'll probably self-publish that book. And uh, Beverly wants to know if you have them sign like a model release or something, or how does that side of stuff work? That's something I should have had them do, but I didn't. Um, I can go back to all those farm families and say, hey, will you sign this? And they will. Um, but you should. I think you should. Just to set some standards and parameters. So Definitely <laughs> worth having your uh, butt covered with that one. Uh, especially yes, it is. Especially got such powerful images that uh, can definitely uh, be used in campaigns or other things like that. That's uh, what I'm hoping. Yeah, right. Get them out there. We're, we'll spread the word on yep. there. So I do have a few prizes and um, stuff to give away, and then we'll touch base with you in just a minute yeah. on that one. So are you guys excited? Because we've got stuff from uh, ACI to give away. Um, do want to let you know about an awesome uh, special they've got going on for those of you that are watching. Get 25% off of one ACI Flex order. So basically one order that's there. Uh, this is a crazy good deal. So make sure you're jotting down that code. I'll also email it to you. Um, and, uh, before we get to those, I want to let you know about the upcoming shows. Uh, we've got Esteban Gill coming up with one light cinematic wedding photography, Dana Rose with storytelling, finding your perspective with Photoshop, uh, Colby Mecklemore doing real estate photography at the speed of light and Renee Gage doing B finding your path. Um, so those ones are coming up and are going to be crazy, crazy cool. And if you do have ideas for future episodes, email me. That's how we come up with this and create some of this cool content. Um, so now let's get into the, the prizes again. A big shout out to uh, ACI. And uh, they've got a $50 lab credit. And uh, let's see who that winner is going to be. So I got to get there and let's start it up and see. It is Donna. So congratulations, Donna, on that one. I've got a $75 lab credit to give away. So let's see who the winner is on this one. Isn't it fun giving away stuff? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best part. Right? It's like everybody likes free stuff. And it is Kimberly. So congratulations, Kimberly. And I've got one more prize to give away, and that's a $100 lab credit because uh, that's kind of awesome, especially if you pair that in with the uh, the discounts. Let's see who that uh, winner is. And we got the spin, spin, spin. <laughs> and it is Terry. Getting those recorded. Awesome. So congratulations, guys, on uh, those prizes. Uh, be sure to look out for an email from ACI about how you can uh, have that applied to your account and all of that. All right, Justin. So we're on the final uh, home stretch here. What uh, kind of parting thoughts do you have? We got just a few more minutes left. Yeah. So, no, um, thanks for having me, first of all, yeah. everybody who, <laughs> who joined tonight. So, yeah, I mean... If you guys got questions or anything, you know, um, I think you're going to email out my contact info. I'm an open book. There's no, as Connie and knows, I don't hold anything back. So there's no secrets. So, you know, if you have problems with the project or you're wanting to do a project, you don't know where to start, just give me a call, shoot me a call, shoot me an email, text me, um, and I'll help you out. Because I think when I started photography, I started out in the world of photojournalism too. That was going to be my big deal. And no one would help you. Nope. You were a competition. And that has changed so much in the last what, 15, 16 years. So I'm always open. Give me a call. I, I love helping people, you know, because it's not going to, I think as, as photographers, if we all help each other, we all become better. We make a better industry for each other. I don't see even people here in Cedar Rapids. Yeah. The, theory we're all competition but we all hang out together and kind of push each other so which makes each other better which gives us way better photographers so yep I, i'm with you on that one um, and i will have all your uh, contact information and details emailed out after this so everybody can get a hold of you i've um, got a question from carolyn wants to know who you use for self-publishing i don't know who i'm using yet um i've <laughs> done a lot of research like i've 
blurb is super easy. If you're going to like, I love blurb, but they're super expensive. If you're trying to, let's say post a, a, a book and sell it, it's like retail prices already $29.99 a book, you know, is somebody going to spend an additional five or $10? Maybe they might. Um, blurb is the one that I've come to look around a lot, but I've got geez, four or five, probably different ones. There's a place out. I can't think of what their name is. They were out of the UK, but I don't know if I want to deal with that yet. So I'm still looking around on the publishing side because some, I wish I could take all these great things I found and put them into one company, you know, like really nice books that are affordable, but I need the help on the designing side. And some offer that some don't, you know, with publishers, some publishers will say, Oh, we'll do everything for you for this fee. And then you can do what you want with it. So I don't have anybody exactly kind of, but blurb is one and a great way just to start to say, Hey, I'm doing this project for myself or somebody and you just want to do a book to make a physical copy, that's a great place to start. My uh, friend Angela's in the, the comments here. She's published a book and said she used uh, Book Baby and Lulu and like Lulu's quality. Oh, yes. Better. Both of those. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Both of those. Yeah. Yeah. Book Baby and Lulu. Yeah. Those were two that were that are, that are on my list. So. Yeah. And I've got Angela's book, so I know that it's quality there. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> Good I'm looking now. forward to seeing your book come through. Hopefully. It'll be exciting. Yeah, that'll be the the next passion project, huh? <laughs> yes, get, right. Actually, books. get it published. I can make books. I'll do. Get my photos out to the world. I know. Yes. Start making a difference. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so very, very much, Justin. Like that was a ton yeah. of really, really inspiring moments, and I think you put thank you. Uh, a nice way of uh, having us have like an action plan, but getting that inspiration that's mm-hmm. there, finding something yep. that kind of speaks to you, and then going out and doing it. And we've got that roadmap, so we know how to actually accomplish mm-hmm. that. And uh, now it sounds like it's up to us to actually go out and use this knowledge, huh? It is. And really awesome. If you've got a project you've started, and send it to me. It'd be awesome. I love seeing other photographers work. So, Oh, very cool. All right. Well, that's officially a wrap for us tonight. Uh, getting in the comments, everybody saying thank you. Really enjoyed your program today. So uh, that's a success. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good night, everybody.